Hey guys. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Give it a brief moment more and then we'll get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the network service mesh for you. So welcome, and so is anyone able to share the, uh, the screen? I believe I'm sharing my screen. Cool, I see it. Okay, we have only two people signed for the call, so maybe the rest would like to add their names here too. Thank you. All right, so we have this meeting every um, every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And we have a bi-weekly NSM Asia call, which occurs every Tuesday at, at 10 a.m. CET time, which is 8 a.m. GMT. So. There is a uh, link to the doc to the meeting notes within the uh, within the chat that was posted. Thanks for posting it. We are also involved in CNCF Telecom User Group, which occurs every first Monday at eight a.m. and every third Monday at four a.m. There's also a CNCF Networking working group which is in the process of being rebooted and had its first meeting at coupon um, major events coming up include devconf in uh, Brno. the call for proposals is already closed uh, we have fosdem 2020 in belgium coming up And um, the call for proposals is currently open. We have KubeCon coming up in Europe in March 30th, April 2nd. Just a reminder, the call for papers closes on, um, on Wednesday, tomorrow. But also recall that uh, there's no time zones uh, listed. So uh, bear, keep that in mind. Um, it may, it may be a European time zone.
we have we also have a schedule that the schedule will be announced on January 22nd, and there is also a call for proposals for a telecom networking and CNF uh, group. Is Taylor on by any chance? I think he might be at the um, the CNCF talk. Yeah, so th this is this is the uh, the telecom networking and CNF um, talk that they're putting together. Or a set of talks. So we'll have to ask uh, Taylor about it whether this is whether they're planning to submit this into the main KubeCon or whether this is a, uh, a side of them that they're, that they're planning to run. We also have Open Networking and Edge Summit in North America coming up. For announcements, uh, is there any announcements anyone would like to make? So no 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 announcement on on, on my side. I know that Ed, Ed is not joining, and uh, Lucina is not joining. Um, so this is for the social media community team. We need to cover that on our own. Um, I probably would like to have a question about you know the cloud native, like like the KubeCon uh, EU submissions. Um, is there anyone on the call that actually is, is preparing any submission? Maybe we need to sync on something here. What's going on? What are the plans? It's quite fast just after the KubeCon NA and then, <clears throat> you know, uh, Thanksgiving, and etc. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe we need a quick sync up here to see uh, what are the plans there. So my... yes, actually, we discussed with Ed, this is Ilya, uh, to propose a security uh, talk. So I guess it's in the progress of discussion with Ed and guys from Spire. Okay, wow, okay, that's, that's, that's good. I mean, you, you mean you have kind of 24 hours or something like this? I already have a draft. Uh, Okay. Drop doc, just discussions with guys from uh -huh. Oh, okay, perfect. That sounds yeah. that sounds good. Really good. Okay, I hope that uh, will be uh, good success uh, here. I know that there are some other things that are going on for some other you know, parallel calls and discussions, but um, okay. Um, so Fred, uh, are we discussing the maintainer stack here or we, we, we are taking this offline? Um, so in terms of the, so, so, so can you repeat the question? I didn't quite catch that. The maintainer track sessions that we probably will have to submit. Yeah, that, that one I think um, that's a conversation that we need to have with that. Um, we will definitely submit something for the maintainer track. Uh, for those of you that are that are unaware, so what tends to happen is they have the main set of sessions that uh, that go on, and then they have a maintainer's track. And so, uh, for projects that uh, that are really within the CNCF, I believe like there there's a there's a separate. I, I don't want to say it's a separate submission draft, but it's a there's a separate there's there's a section specifically for for CNCF projects to to present, and so we're we're gonna pre, we're gonna it's not a guarantee that you get in, uh, but we're we're going to post to that as well. Um, and outside of that track, I am planning on uh, submitting a. Uh, an integration between open telemetry and NSM. And so we'll, um, so we'll see how that, uh, how that goes too. Um, we are also working on the initial set of planning for, for NSM con. So that's something else that, um, uh, we would like to run in Europe if possible. 
Uh, we'll have more information on that once we get some more some more details. Um, and it'll it'll very likely be ran in the same in the same way that uh, NSMCon number one was ran, which uh, was which is, which was a huge success, at least, at least from, from my perspective. So uh, once we have more information on an NSMCon, then we will uh, we'll add more information. Uh, so right now this is tentative until we can uh, until we can drive things together. Uh, but this is also another option where if your if your talk is not submit not not, say not submitted if your talk is not accepted into KubeCon, there is a second opportunity and there's a potential second opportunity to submit it into NSMCon. Yep. Okay. So. If anyone needs help as well with getting their their talks in, um, I'll be I'll be around most of the day on Slack, and I'm pretty sure there's others in the NSM community who are willing to help as well. So if you're if you want to if you're putting something together and you, you need someone to help review or bounce an idea off, like I, I know time is short, but you know we'll, we'll do our best. So. We have uh, Twitter account information. So we have 597 followers. So that's seven above what we had before. We're following uh, 2067, which is plus four. And we had 850 total tweets, which was an increase in 10. We posted the future is now. The five cool things video, which was our QCon talk. And we retweeted multiple mentions. The plan is to post the NSMCon slides, retweet um, and the various retweet mentions, and once we hit 600, to send a thank you tweet. And um, we're still, are we still waiting for this for the contributor podcast? Has that not been released yet? Do you know, Nikolai? Uh, I know nothing of any updates. I was contacted by Lucina just before the call. She didn't mention anything about it. So, so if that's what written, that's that's what, what we know. Okay. And with that, I'm not sure what the RFC is. Um, mm -hmm. And we also are running LinkedIn uh, updates now. So that's it for the uh for the main status um is there right now we have a, a relatively empty agenda is there anything that anyone would like to discuss hey guys uh Shamek from intel here actually i was asked by uh ed and dave kremis to uh, do a quick demo of the uh srov for order uh oh. for the nsm that would be really cool. Um, yeah, I'd love to see it. So I've, this is when um, this is one topic I've been very excited about for for a long time. So um, also recall that this video is recorded. So whatever you show here will uh, will be available for others who are not on the call today. All right. Uh, are you, do you want to share your screen? If now, if now is the time to do the demo, then yeah, absolutely, I can share yeah. it. Uh, I, I will stop sharing, but maybe, maybe you might, uh, you might want to introduce a little bit the subject, what, what you are doing, um, mm -hmm. so things like that, so that we, we have a common understanding of uh, what's going on on the screen. I'm sure it's pretty cool, but you know, without context, <laughs> people might be wondering why this is cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, I started sharing. Uh, let me know when you can see it. We can see it. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so maybe a quick introduction to what the SROV actually is. Uh, 
uh, self a service uh, technology that uh, allows the user to uh, expose or create a number of uh, virtual uh, function devices uh, that represent the single physical device. Uh, so for example, you can have a single network uh, interface controller, single NIC, and then uh, based on that present it as a uh, multiple number uh, of NICs, uh, the operating system and the applications that run there. Uh, this allows the applications uh, to have direct access uh, to the hardware. So for example, you can have a virtual machine or, or Kubernetes pod uh, talking directly uh, to the hardware instead of uh, going through some uh, software-based solutions, right? So for example, in, in, without the SRIOV, you would have a Linux bridge or open vSwitch bridge uh, that would move the traffic between virtual machine or Kubernetes pod and the external networks. With SRIOV, you can provide direct access to the hardware, uh, to the applications uh, that run inside Kubernetes pods or, or virtual machines. Uh, so I have a, a single uh, node cluster here, single node uh, environment. Then on that uh, node, I have a SRIOV capable uh, network adapter, which is actually some, uh, pretty old uh, Intel uh, controller uh, with the speed of 10 gigabits uh, per second. Mm, only, and I have uh, four uh, physical ports available. Only one of them is connected. Uh, it, this would be the, the port number uh, four here, the fourth one. Uh, so in order to, to enable uh, SRIOV, uh, or maybe uh, how the how would it look like when the SRIOV is enabled? And I'll start with that. So you know, if you run IP link command, you expect that uh, it will list all uh, network interfaces that are um, available uh, to be used on, on the node. Uh, with SRIOV enabled, you get something like that. Uh, for the single physical function here, uh, which in this case is called ENS seven eight five F three. We can create uh, up to uh, 64, uh, 64 VFs, uh, depending on, on the hardware. At the moment, I have uh, 16 virtual functions enabled. So after that, uh, each of these virtual functions is visible not only here uh, under this physical function, uh, but also as the regular uh, network interfaces. So for example, that would be ENP 2S 15 F7. So uh, you, get the, you get the idea. Uh, single uh, hardware interface that can be exposed as multiple virtual network interface. Uh, so coming to the, to the Kubernetes site. Mm. In order to use these uh, virtual functions uh, as network providers or network interfaces that uh, can be attached to the Kubernetes pod, uh, we need to have some mechanism that uh, does that. Uh, so, uh, in case of the NSM SRIOV forwarder, uh, we need two. The first one would be the regular uh, SRIOV device plugin, uh, which is maintained by Intel on GitHub. Uh, basically, no big modifications uh, have been done to that SRIOV device plugin uh, at this stage to, to make it work with the NSM. Uh, there's only a single patch that kind of increases the configurability uh, of the device plugin. It, it allows to uh, configure custom resource prefixes uh, names for the resource pools. So what is resource pools uh, in case of the SRV device plugin? Um, I'll show you the, the configuration, which is uh, in this case, just a simple config map. Uh, there we go. So the most important uh, piece of data is, is this uh, JSON uh, config. Uh, so a SRIOV network device plugin configuration uh, file allows us to create uh, or to specify a number of uh, resources uh, pools. Resource pool is, is the correct term for this. Uh, so as you can see, we have an array here. And then for each of the resource pool, uh, we can configure resource prefix. 
and then resource name. And then uh, this is uh, an option for the for the server V device plugin to it uses it to basically just choose which uh, device is, is assigned to which resource pool. I uh, have a that, quick mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Pajamik. Uh, so um, what I see here is that you essentially uh, you're demonstrating different resource prefix for each of the items in the list. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, correct. Last time that I checked the SRV plugin, it was more or less a static resource pre prefix. Is this the new thing that you mentioned? Yeah, yeah, this is a new functionality that Perfect. I yeah, okay. that I added Great. to the device plugin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And th th this is upstream in the SRV plugin, I mean, if I download the SRV uh, plugin now? or Not yet, not, not yet. yet. Okay. Yeah, okay. I haven't start, I haven't even started the upstreaming process yet. Mm -hmm. Also, okay. I just chatted briefly with Ed before this meeting and he also mm -hmm. had a couple mm -hmm. of new ideas that can extend this configuration even more. But uh -huh. I'm expecting to, to push this PR uh, probably still this week. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, uh, so yeah. just for just for quick context to the to the rest of the audience here, and uh, and the viewers lately, uh, this is uh, very crucial because um, um, this resource prefix we are going to use to enumerate our network services in local or remote domains. So for us, it was very very uh, important that you we have a way to have different resource prefixes for the various services that we would like to expose. So that's a that's a good step forward. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, maybe quick uh, describe on the node and uh, to confirm that the, the resources are created and uh, managed by the device plugin. So as you can see here at the at the bottom, uh, we have this uh, exactly what we have in the device plugin configuration, right? We have the kernel service one intel.com slash 10g and then the same goes for the user space and obviously because uh, this comes from the configuration file this is this is fully configurable uh, and we can have uh, multiple uh, resource prefixes running alongside uh, inside a single uh, kubernetes node mm. okay so uh, are you interested in, in uh, how does the SRV device plugin uh, allocate the allocate the um, virtual functions to the pods? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe I can actually show that. Uh, so once we schedule a, a new pod, uh, and this pod would be actually the example uh, from the NSM repository ICMP responder. Uh, so I updated the um, the pod spec uh, for it or the hand template actually. Uh, let me show you how does the pod spec look like uh, now. Let's take and let's see first. See um, Yeah, so in the resources sections uh, section in the pod spec, you can see we have a new addition, uh, which is our kernel uh, service one intel.com resource, which is virtual function uh, of the of the SRLV NIC. Uh, then new addition that uh, currently it's uh, injected uh, by the webhook uh, admission controller uh, is this environmental variable. Uh, this is kind of hacky solution I came up at the moment uh, in order to to be able to, to pass uh, this environmental variable and why this is important uh, I'll show you right now. So uh, instead of uh, exec let's execute, uh, let's get to the inside that pod. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, after the SRV network device plugin uh, allocates the resource uh, for the kernel based interfaces, uh, not using the accelerated user space data path, uh, the only information that we will see will be the environmental uh, variable. So after the uh, resources uh, requested uh, in the pod spec, the network, the SRV network device plugin will allocate that we add VF, uh, from the resource pool. And then it will inject uh, its uh, PCI address uh, as an environmental variable uh, inside that pod. So in this case, uh, where we start? Okay. 
sorry, uh, it will be visible only in the uh, in the init container, so not here, uh, but it will be visible in the NSC. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so this is exactly the the environmental uh, variable that is injected uh, by the SRLV device plugin. So as you can see, uh, it's, it includes the resource uh, prefix and resource name. So as you can imagine, this is a dynamic thing uh, that you know we need to figure it out dynamically. So currently the, the only solution is to, to reference this uh, environmental variable as part of uh, another environmental variable here. So. Uh, this is kind of hacky solution I came up uh, with at the moment. Uh, this goes this goes mostly because of the limitations of SRLV network device plugin, and also because of the limitations of the NSM client applications at the moment. Because th there was a lot of hard coded requests and and other uh, stuff that I need to uh, play with and then to fix it by introducing more hard coded stuff at the moment. So this is something that, uh, that we definitely need to improve uh, in the future. Uh, but for the moment it, it works fine. Uh, okay, so now uh, that's pretty much it uh, regarding the SRLV device plugin. Uh, let's get to the second uh, more interesting component, uh, which is the, huh? Uh, I have I have just one small addition here. I mean, I I get it why the hack is is needed, and I'm sure that we'll be able to figure out a better solution in the end. Um, one small note about the um, labeling the limits that you showed uh, uh, in the YAML file for the NSC. Mm -hmm. So uh, just for the viewers to know that uh, uh, this is needed in order to be able to schedule the resource. This is the way that the device plugin mechanism by itself for us so that by adding these limits uh, this essentially tells the cube scheduler that it needs to <coughs> schedule this workload wherever this resource will be available and uh, in a normal kubernetes cluster you probably have nodes that have this resource available and nodes that don't have it so uh, selecting the proper work like a worker node is uh, is very important and that's why it's needed here. I'm, I'm saying this because in general I'm very sensitive when we are adding additional annotations to our uh, pods uh, and uh, I needed some time to, to kind of um, assimilate this and say okay fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah yeah and the yeah, and the resource itself uh, isn't even added in the in the helm template. Uh, currently, I'm doing something like that. Uh, I'm just adding two new annotations with the resource prefix and resource name uh, to the template. And then I let the admission webhook uh, figure out what should be the resource name and then uh, mm -hmm. inject it in, into that post. So, you know, mm -hmm. this this yeah. makes it more, more dynamic, uh, less less hard-coded, but you know, it's still not a, not a perfect production-ready solution, right? Uh, it will take a, a couple of iterations, but I'm sure that kind of trying and retrying will we, we, we end up uh, where we want to be. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, okay. So, uh, are there any other questions uh, regarding the device plugin part? Or can we move on to the uh, forwarder? Yeah. I hear silence, so I guess we can move on. Uh, so as you can see, we have a, a new uh, application running here. It's uh, an SMS RV forwarder. It's kind of a replacement for the existing forwarders, for the kernel forwarder and the VPP uh, forwarder. Uh, so maybe I can show you some uh, source code. Uh, so the PR for the NSM, and this is actually something that gets upstreamed uh, to the NSM. Uh, I opened the PR, I believe, last Friday. Uh, so it's, uh, it can be reviewed. Uh, but what it does, uh, it's keep the obvious parts like uh, for other registration and, and other stuff because it's uh, exactly, uh, it works exactly the same way as in, in the other for others. Uh, what's important is uh, how we handle the requests uh, coming from the from the client applications. Uh, 
and what types of uh, mechanisms we, we support. Uh, so in case of uh, this uh, SROV for radar, uh, we're going to need uh, two new local mechanisms. Uh, I commented out for the moment. One would be for the kernel based interfaces. So for the, for the virtual functions that are bound to the kernel uh, module. So, you know, the entire packet processing uh, will be um, will be performed uh, in the ker Linux kernel uh, network stack. Uh, and another mechanism type uh, is needed for the, for the user uh, space connections. So for example, for the TPDK applications and, and other similar solutions. Uh, so currently, uh, in the current implementation, only a SROV uh, kernel mechanism is, is introduced. Uh, I rebased this PR on, on Monday. Uh, so you know that the initial implementation was based on the, when we still had the local and remote APIs. So after new uh, unified API was introduced, I had to rebase it and currently there's only uh, one SROV kernel uh, mechanism available, uh, but you know, in the future, the, the second one, the user space one, uh, will be definitely added here as well. Uh, so the, the only new uh, field that's uh, in the request in this case uh, is the PCI address uh, of the virtual function. So now if you are connecting the pieces here, uh, what we get from the SRV network device plugin, only the PCI address, right? So this is the only thing that uh, we can probably use to request a new uh, interface inside our Kubernetes pod. So that's exactly uh, what is being done here. So we take the request, uh, we take the PCI address, which is the, the most important piece of information here. Uh, then we obviously uh, have, a, have an option to configure the name uh, of the link. And also, we, we also obviously need the um, network namespace uh, inode uh, identifier uh, to know to which uh, network namespace we should inject that uh, virtual function. And then we do some configuration. Uh, I'll show you what type of configuration is currently supported in a second. Uh, and then we obviously do exactly the same thing for the destination interface. Uh, now, uh, Again, I will need some help here, uh, some brainstorming, uh, because you know, with the purely software-based uh, data path, uh, it's, I mean, it's extremely easy to create new uh, virtual Ethernet uh, link pair, or to inject a new VPP interface and so on. But here we are dealing with uh, hardware resources. So you know, if you want to attach, for example, uh, 20 uh, clients to a single uh, NSE, uh, then we have a problem because attaching 20 virtual functions to, to a single uh, Kubernetes spot seems like an overkill and probably there is some uh, way to reuse that VF. So, so I'm currently mm -hmm. trying to, to figure, figure it out, uh, I think. Um, I found that across various requests, the, the workspace name uh, is matching. So, so I was kind of wondering that maybe I could reuse that and use it as some kind of uh, key for the connection or something like that. So, so I don't need to allocate a uh, new separate uh, destination VF uh, each time. But yeah, that, that's something to, to consider and something that uh, I'll be working on and I'm looking for, for feedback as well. Uh, okay, so maybe let's jump to the configure VF interface. Um, what we do here? Uh, well, first, first of all, we get the uh, network interface handle. That's pretty much obvious. Uh, but then based on the PCI address, uh, we need to get the link name or what's the representation of the uh, link in the kernel namespace. So in this case, for example, if I'm requesting, uh, you know how the, how the PCI address uh, looks like. Uh, so for example, a uh, network device uh, plugin gives me something like that, like 0 02 colon 0 f.1. Uh, from this, I need to know what is the actual interface representation. So based on the information uh, of the PCI address, I need to get something like that, ENP to S14, for example. Then uh, having this information, uh, I can use this link uh, and inject it uh, into a Kubernetes pod. So uh, the steps are as follows. Uh, pretty similar to the kernel for actually. 
Uh, we get the link representation uh, based on the link name, uh, then set the link down for, for the time of operation. Uh, we move it into a network namespace of the Kubernetes pod. Uh, then uh, we set its IP address, uh, uh, set, the, set the name uh, again, and, and then uh, set the link up so, so it can be used. Uh, and we do that for, for both source and destination uh, link. So uh, once that's done, uh, we can we can see the uh, virtual function uh, properly injected and configured inside a pod. So uh, to show you that, MSM system. And then using our example, uh, I see peer responder. Oh, sorry, nice space. It's very important. Yeah, I'll start with the client side. Uh, let's execute IP address. So we can see we have uh, three interfaces, uh, loopback, which is loopback. Then we have interface provisioned by the um, Flannel, uh, by the CNI plugin. And then here we have our uh, virtual function that is the, the hardware resource that is uh, assigned or attached directly to our Kubernetes mm -hmm. pod. And then on the other side, The endpoint side, we'll see our, the other side of the, of the interface uh, here as well with, with different uh, mm -hmm. IP address. So from that, from the client side, I can uh, easily ping the, the endpoint and, and get the response. So, you know, we have the uh, connection, cross connection established uh, between two bots. So this is how it currently works. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. That's that was very very de de detailed and excellent presentation. I, I I'm sure that it will have to go through some iterations before this uh, gets uh, in fully merged. But uh, I have just a quick question here. So mm -hmm. how how dynamic is the resource allocation here? So uh, is there a way that I can uh, drop this interface now, then in, inject it in another pod? Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Once the uh, once the pod is uh, dead, basically mm -hmm. terminated, uh, the VF uh, will be released by the SROV device plugin. It will be returned uh, to the resource pool and then can be reused uh, mm -hmm. again for, for okay. another pod. Okay. Also, for example, uh, we can. Uh -huh. Scale the, the deployment, and this is something that doesn't really work uh, well yet on the uh, network service endpoint side. Uh, mm -hmm. However, it kind of works for the for the client side. Uh, scale deployment. What we have here, LS2, and then we have ICMP responder NSC. So the new uh, bot will be provisioned now. Uh, let's watch it. So now the, the init container, uh, which was also updated uh, by me as mm -hmm. part of this PR, uh, will take that environmental uh, variable uh, and we will use it to, to provision a new okay. interface. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, good. Uh, are there are there any uh, any other questions from other people here? Because I feel like I'm the only one asking questions. But... So once uh, once this is uh, done and merged, do you have any intentions of uh, pushing on the uh, user space path? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, I guess it, this would be uh, very connected and would, mm -hmm. will have to be done in parallel, uh, both data ports. I guess there, there will be some overlap uh, between the two. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, um, we're we're very excited. I, I cannot begin to describe how much this, um, uh, how much people have been asking for for this type of uh, functionality. Mm -hmm. So th thank you very much for for working on this. Yeah, I'm sure this uh, this video will be, will be viral very soon once uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th one question I had, uh, but I. This is Ryan from from Sousa. Um, I'm kind of new here, um, so forgive me. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, first time here as well. <laughs> <laughs> but but my, my question would be: um, is, is there any help that you need moving this forward? Well, help is always uh, appreciated. Uh, currently, the 
Yeah, I, I talked with uh, Ed before the meeting and there's still a, a lot of, uh, maybe not a lot of work, but uh, there's a significant portion of work that needs to be done in the SRLV network device plugin to, to extend the configurability even more, uh, you know, beyond that uh, resource prefixes only. Uh, but for example, to, al to allow uh, dynamic rebinding of the uh, driver that controls the, the VF, right? So for example, you start with a VF that is attached to kernel uh, driver, and then you reattach it to a user space interface. So now uh, you can run the PDK application on top of that. So, so we have a lot of ideas like that and we definitely uh, could use some help uh, with that. Also the, the user space uh, mechanism here uh, currently. Now with the with the kernel mechanism, it's, it's easy because you have a link representation that you can work with. Uh, but with the, the user space, uh, what, what can you configure, right? Uh, so for example, we already had similar problems in the SRO VCNI plugin or, uh, or the <coughs> uh, nested DPDK driver for, for OpenStack, uh, where you know that there was nothing to work with. So we ended up adding some uh, annotations or, or creating files uh, inside uh, Kubernetes spot file system, uh, so st stuff like that. So we definitely need, also need some help with uh, design uh, of that part as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah of, of course, uh, any help and, and reviews and, and feedback is highly appreciated. Cool. Oh. So um, a couple uh, a couple of comments on that. So on the design, um, in our GitHub page, uh, we have uh, a uh, specs section uh, under under the uh, under project. So it's it's part of the Kanban board. So you go to GitHub Network Service Mesh Repo. On the top, you'll see projects, and then there's a board called specs. And in there, you and, and you can get a hold of me as well if you, if you, if you don't re remember this, but. Uh, if you if you want some help with design from the community, one thing you can do is uh, create a Google document and and link it there so that uh, people can have a place to to know where where it's at. And uh, we often will review many things through that process. And so, um, a second thing is well uh, that we may uh, that we should uh, make sure that uh, uh, it eventually gets included in. So we, we have uh, CI across uh, multiple clouds. Uh, I know for certain that uh, packet.net supports SROILV. And I know they support, or at least I've been, to I've been told to the two NIC cards that they have, one of them is from uh, Mellanox and the other one is, uh, is from Intel. We should uh, make sure that uh, we include this work that you're doing um, once it gets merged in that we should make sure that we provision some packet.net resources to make sure that this path stays uh, uh, stays uh, fixed. So that's that's something that we can uh, that we can help with. And I don't know what the cards the current instance is having them. Um, so we'll we'll have to we'll have to take a look at that. So uh, on on the forwarder side and on probably on the CI side, we already have uh, Radoslav uh, in contact uh, with Pijamek to to just to work together. So we wanted to have someone from the community dedicated to help him, and because Radoslav did the um, um, the kernel forwarder, I believe that uh, he's uh, in a very good position to know what it takes to implement a forwarder for NSM uh, to today. So uh, that's, uh, of course, I think. But of course, a everyone that wants to help in any way is it's more than, than welcome. So um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and uh, Ryan, if, if you have additional resources, I know you made that comment about asking for asking about helping. If you have additional resources uh, and Definitely feel feel free to, to join in, and if you need some help uh, with joining in, uh, you can always talk with. Um, and my recommendation is to join us on Slack. We have a NSM channel. Yep, uh, it's in the uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation Slack, and feel free to ping us in the NSM channel. Uh, you can hit me, Ed. Um, you can hit uh, Nikolai and uh, um, and Andre. But the, yeah, there's there's plenty of people that's there's always some, almost always somebody on there. So, 
Yeah, I've been in touch with Ed. I'm, I'm in the Slack channel. Um, yeah, I, I may be able to, um, you know, scrounge up some, um, some some hardware that we have um, to to help you know test things and and um, do do some useful work. Um, so if there's specific things where I can help, I'm I'm kind of new to this project and the Kubernetes ecosystem in general, so I might be a little slow putting together PRs while I ramp. But um, yeah, I'm I'm, ha I'm happy to help and. Um, in any way I can. Oh, no, no problem. And um, the two other things that we ask for help on from uh, from new uh, uh, from newcomers is uh, take a look at our at our documents while you're build, while you're building things up. And um, if you're if you're able to suggest some fixes through pull requests, uh, that that'd be that'd be fantastic. Because you'll approach it you approach it with with. Uh, fresh uh, new eyes, and so that's that's hard for us to approach it in, in the in the same way. Uh, and when you run into a blocker, definitely come definitely come and grab it. Like don't waste time trying to trying to negotiate the system. Like definitely definitely grab one of us and uh, and let us know as well. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll do our best to to help you with uh, with that path. Okay, great. Cool. Um, are there any other questions for uh, um, for the SROV topic? Okay. Well, thank you very much for for coming over here and presenting. So uh, we're we'll we'll definitely make sure that this video gets circulated around. Uh, there's, there's definitely strong interest in in this space. Uh, so again, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cool. Are there any other uh, Are there any other topics that people would like to discuss? We have ten minutes left. Okay. If there are no other topics, and then we'll yield back ten minutes of time. I have just one quick. I think Ryan, you sent a question today, like a PR, I don't know, an issue today about Helm Tree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a good topic. I mean, I think that it's also a good, uh, um, you know, newcomer issue. <laughs> it shouldn't be that <laughs> that complex. So yeah, if you need help with this, yeah, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 cooking a PR on that right now. Perfect. Um, oh, okay. Great. Just to help help get myself over the hump and share it with others. So perfect. Um, okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, a, um, a friend of mine who has got kind of involved with a lot of different open source projects just told me that the magic number that uh, she has seen is around five, uh, five five commits until people start to feel somewhat comfortable with with submitting patches. So. So my recommendation is to is to is to make that a make that the goal. Cool. Uh, are there any other? Um, is there anything that we wanted to talk about on that topic, or is is everything good on on keeping that with Slack? Okay. Mm -hmm. In that scenario, uh, I want to thank everyone for, for your time, and we will see you all again at the same time next week. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.